California. He weighed in at the super welterweight limit of 154 pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with a record of 20 wins, no losses, one draw, with five wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, he is making his first attempt at a world title, introducing the WBC number eight ranked middleweight contender known as the Latin Snake, introducing Sergio and his opponent across the ring on my right fighting out of the red corner the defending world champion wearing black trunks with orange trim and hailing from atlanta georgia he weighed in at 153 and three quarter pounds. His record stands at 40 wins, two losses, one no contest with 29 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, making the second defense of his title, ladies and gentlemen, here is the three-time world champion and the current WBC super welterweight champion of the world, introducing Vernon, the Viper. Once again, a referee in charge, Richard Flaherty, now to give instructions. Okay, gentlemen, we're going to do a slow run. All the questions have been answered in the dressing room. Okay, just a little bit high. That's okay. That's all right there. That's too high. That's too high. Right. You got to get them down. All right, touch him up, gentlemen. Touch him up. So much for touching up. <laughs> we asked, you responded. Al, the results of our text message poll, and pretty close between one and two. Interesting. You'd think there would have been, although Mayarga did get uh, uh, support because their first two fights were so interesting, but Shane Mosley remains a popular and interesting figure to all boxing fans, as he should. Forrest wants Mayorga. Rangy, sharp punching Vernon Forrest, a gifted boxer with power, which comes from his skills. The jab makes everything work, but his money punch, the big right. More a kind of a, a quirky, awkward style, very unorthodox. He'll switch back and forth. He's got the good hand speed, but he kind of fights in spurts. He'll mostly stay on the outside and dart in sporadically. He'll look to steal rounds. Very tricky kind of a guy. I think these early rounds very important for Sergio Mora. He needs to understand he belongs in the ring with Vernon Forrest and needs to get some things done during the course of these first couple of rounds. And we'll see if that can happen. Forrest typically wants to establish that long jab early. It sets up the power shots. 29 of his 40 wins by knockout. 12 in the there first round. Check it top. Check it top. Mora is used to being hit by middleweight, so that could be a plus tonight for him. He's also mentally tough, but not a knockout threat. Only five KOs in his 20 wins. So far as particularly Al, with his proven chin, could probably afford to take risks. He's only been down once. He told us he'd never thought about that <laughs> till I brought it up in the fighter meeting yesterday. He was only concerned with Mora's skills. You think I jinxed him? He, might, he hopes not. Yeah, he said he's never thought much about it. Now, you know, there's the right hand of Forrest, which could be a good weapon here tonight and should be. And, you know, Sergio Mora coming down to 154, you talked about him working with Robert Ferguson and trying to get his body there. I think that's a terrific move for him. I think this could be a good way for him, even though he says if he wins his title, he'd vacate it. But uh, I, I think this might be a good way for Sergio Mora. We'll see. He did say if he won tonight, he would immediately give up the title and move back to 160. Barr said Mora was the first fighter he sparred with after his surgery, claiming he dominated Mora with one hand while laughing. Mora claims he had the upper hand. Seems to be a difference of opinion. Now, there was the uppercut by Mora on the inside, a punch I mentioned in the keys could be effective for him. So far, Sergio Mora has chosen to fight from the outside against Forrest rather than get inside. And Vernon, happy with that, I would think. And Vernon taking some time to figure him out, but I would think he'd be happy with a fight at long range. Mora just walked into a, a jab. You hear the crowd reaction in the background, not liking that. There's a good body shot and a heavy right hand by Forrest who opens up. 
A chopping right miss. The elusive Sergio Mora got out of the way of that one. The right hand of Forrest, which I suggested before this fight would be his most important punch, has really made itself known here in round number one and might have won him this round against Mora, even though Vernon hasn't been super active. Because Mora fights so selectively and picks his spots, he tends to fall behind, which could be asking for trouble against Forrest since it's so hard to lay him out. Good right hand there by Vernon Forrest. Final seconds of round one. Well, at least we got through the first. Little chit chat on the way to the corners. Everything off the jab and stay to the body. The hell with the nice guy shit. Okay? He's trying to be nice so you don't put them things on him, but we ain't got time for that. We've been well, nice Mora after is known as a body puncher, but Vernon okay. Forrest can right, dig right, down, right, right, down there as well. There's okay. a ripping left hook to the body that may have impacted him. And then there's the right hand when you come from back Forrest. Up show a punch that him, okay? will be but a very important right weapon. So we saw two elements of Forrest's attack. There's that right hand that landed very, very effectively. And if there's a punch that's going to really hurt Mora and knock him out in this fight, it's that. Buddy McGirt in the corner of Vernon Forrest. The former junior welterweight and welterweight champion, a no-nonsense guy. In the face of Vernon Forrest, he says, you trying to be nice? We ain't got time for that. Yeah, and also in that corner, Al Mitchell, former Olympic trainer who is almost a co-trainer with uh, uh, with McGirt, who's been working with Vernon Forrest uh, forever. So he has a very, very talented and good corner, Vernon Forrest. Round two is scheduled for 12 for the WBC Super Welterweight crown. Vernon Forrest in the black with orange. Sergio Mora in the black with white trim. Forrest spending a lot of time in the first round on the outside. Let's see if he uh, is more aggressive and comes forward and tries to get inside on the Latin snake. A few things happened in that first round that weren't very good for Sergio Mora. I think he was hit with harder punches than he would have liked and had a, a rough time throwing combinations, which I think is the key for Mora. He's going to have to be very busy to win this fight. First time we see Mora switch to lefty, which he can do, but now he comes back. Now that's what Mora needs to do. Throw a lot of punches on the inside, rip shots, even if they don't all get there. Be busy. When Mora switches to lefty, Al, it's more for show. It's really not tremendously effective. And usually when a guy switches to the other side, he loses his power and accuracy. A chopping right by Laura goes nowhere. We should remind ourselves, too, that this is the first fight back after a thumb injury for Sergio Mora. Rip tends into that thumb in the right hand, so we'll be lo looking to see if that right hand is continued to be thrown by him and landed. Here's a chopping right, top of the head by Forrest. Yeah, he said it was fine going into this fight. Forrest said because of Mora's unpredictable style, you really have to stay focused. Great uppercut by Forrest on the inside, even though Mora shakes his head. And, you know, I mentioned the Mora uppercut before the fight, but Vernon Forrest has a good one himself. Yeah, Mora expecting perhaps the right, and he got the uppercut. And, you know, even though Vernon Forrest is thought of as a really good outside fighter, he can fight on the inside as well, and showing evidence of that here early in this fight. You know, you recall in his last fight, there's a good left uh, hook there, upstairs by Sergio Mora. Uh, Vernon Forrest kind of lulled Michele Picciarillo. He held back on throwing his right and nailed him in the 11th round. Some good action here. Mora is pressing the attack, but Forrest counterpunching very well. Right hand by Forrest. And Mora indicating, ah, you just raised me. This is unquestionably a boxing match right now. All right. Turn your legs around when you throw your right hand. All right. When he goes down there, hook to the body. 
Right hook to the body. In this round, I want you to throw the right hook to the body. Cover the uppercut. They see that. They're just dropping back and throwing yep. the uppercut, right? If you turn the legs on, I'll try to beat him to the punch. Sergio like Moore has been known to move to the left-handed stance. And he does it here, and as Steve pointed out, it's mostly to give his opponent a different look. In this case, he stayed in it really only momentarily, but it could be a portent of things to come. And that actually allowed him to go in and land a punch or two because for a second, Forrest was discombobulated. But there's the uppercut by Vernon Forrest and the work on the inside. As I mentioned, though he's not known as an inside fighter, Vernon Forrest can get the job done there. And you know, Sergio Moore is shaking his head a lot, but he's not hurt, but he's going to hit with some big punches. As we enter round number three, Dean Campos in the corner of Sergio Mora runs the police athletic league gym in East L.A. also known as the snake pit in honor of the Latin snake Sergio Mora. Yeah, there's a lot of youngsters that come in out of that gym and uh, the city of Monticello uh, donated the building and it's a it's a source of pride to Sergio Mora. Great community center for the kids. Let's get over to Jim Gray. Jim. All right, Steve. I talked to both these fighters before the fight. There's some animosity. Vernon Forrest said before the fight that he was a pretender, not a contender. Said that he was very upset with Jeff Wald, who is more as a uh, his promoter because he he has shot off his mouth quite a bit at the press conference. He said he's going to pay for that midget. I said, but you're not fighting a midget. He said yes, but he's going to pay for it. I asked more about it. He says this diminishes Forrest in his eyes. He thought that Forrest was a classy guy, and it is out of character for Forrest. He's one of the nicest guys. But he said, really doesn't matter. Sometimes Walt gets underneath his skin as well. But be that as it may, he's on his side, and so that's why there's been so much animosity and a lot of bad talk, really, from a very nice guy, Vernon Forrest, before the fight, Steve. Yeah, Jim, he seemed more upset at Jeff Wald than Sergio Mora. But in the tirade, he also promised that Mora will leave tonight on a stretcher. I don't he says no in today's world, this is Forrest, the venomous and outlandish statements right. make headlines, right. go. bring bigger fights and more money. Yeah, we should also point out that Vernon Forrest's company is, uh, has a piece of this promotion. So, Excellent That's point. So was that the Vernon yeah. Forrest, the promoter talking, or Vernon Forrest, the fighter? I think it was Vernon Forrest, yes. the businessman, because yes. you and I both know Vernon, and uh, it, it's a stretch for him to right, even right. talk that way. So I, 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 kind of, I personally prefer Vernon, the fighter. Yeah, me too. <laughs> He's a lot nicer. Yeah, he sure is. Under a minute remaining, round three. Really, both these men are, are delightful to be around, and... Uh, so that's one of the parts of boxing that sometimes you need to point out. You know, in this round, Mora is trying to get the action initiated on the inside and get some work done like that. But, you know, Forrest is throwing some thunderous body shots as well. Man, he's working the body. Right. All right, stop right yeah, there. Yeah, sort of. It's right. a slow, behind methodical. Our and behind our head. All right. Workmanlike effort here by Forrest and... Uh, Richard Flaherty a warning both stop hitting behind the head. Final seconds of round three. All right, let him out. Stop. Let him out. Force doing the job right of holding there on Sergio, the inside. It's behind the head. That's the second warning for rabbit punches tomorrow. How you feeling, babe? Right. Okay, stop looking for the home run. Okay, what you do is you're looking to land that one big bomb and get him out of there. Okay, okay what you got to do with this guy the same thing you did the patrol. You got to beat him down. Okay? And you got to pick him apart slowly. Mm -hmm. You're looking to land the one bomb. Mm -hmm. Okay? Well, in the keys to victory, I said no wild punches. Don't look for a home run ball. Buddy McGirt just repeated those words. Here, the jab tries to set up the straight right hand, which almost land. Not quite, but boy, it was close. But you see how it made Vernon Forrest off balance, and that's what Buddy McGirt doesn't like. If he'd have stayed on balance, that would have been okay for Forrest. Here on the inside, both men tried getting some good work done, but that left hook to the body by Forrest was really a terrific punch. But you see how Mora can work on the inside as well. That I think this is where Sergio Mora needs to be to make this a winnable fight for himself. Yeah, and a good strategy for Mora. If you repeatedly throw the jab and straight right hand, that can land on Forrest, and Mora has a very 